Good morning, all. I am Dr. Sureka Rathi Samundi, Assistant Professor from the Department of Aeronautical Engineering, Bharat Institute of uh, Higher Education and Research. So, uh, today we'll uh, discuss the introduction to aircraft stability and control. Yes, uh, degrees of freedom. Uh, what is uh, degrees of freedom? It is like uh, the number of uh, uh, independent variables required to define the motion of the system, uh, both the translation motion and the rotational motion. So the minimum number of independent coordinates that can specify the position of the system completely is called as the degrees of freedom. Any rigid body which is moving in space uh, in 3D space system has uh, six degrees of freedom. Uh, just uh, see this uh, figure. This is a gimbal log, and uh, uh, let uh, let us consider that uh, forward and backward. This red line indicates the x-axis, and uh, left right yellow indicates y-axis. Up down, the blue color indicates uh, z-axis. So the airplane is allowed to move forward and backward, uh, left and right, and up and down. So which means that. Three uh, more translation motions are uh, uh, like available for a rigid body. In a similar fashion, the the object in space is allowed to uh, to just uh, uh, to have three rotational motions such as pitch, yaw, and roll. So there are three translation motion and uh, three rotational motion, and that is the reason why I just stated that any body, rigid body in a uh, three-dimensional space system has six degrees of freedom. So they have just formulated to calculate the degrees of freedom, number of translation motions, and the number of rotational motions for any rigid body in X dimensional space system. Say, for example, let us consider uh, that as uh, Three, three dimensional space system. So the degrees of freedom is equal to x into x plus 1 by 2. So since x is 3, so 3 into 4 by 2, which is 6. So as stated, uh, so in three dimensional space system, the degrees of freedom is 6. So the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of translations plus number of rotations. So now translation is equal to x, so which is nothing but 3. And rotations is equal to x into x minus 1 by 2. So 3 into 2 by 2, which again we are getting 3. So number of translations are 3, number of rotations are 3. So that is the reason why uh, we are getting the uh, degrees of freedom as 6. So, so these are all the formulas in order to calculate the degrees of freedom, number of translation motions and number of the rotational motions and uh, you see like uh, uh, as far as your aircraft is concerned uh, we just represent uh, all the three translation motions and the rotational motions in nautical terminologies so if an aircraft is moving up and down so when it is moving up and down you call that is heaving when it is moving right and left you call that is swaying when it is moving front and back you call that is surging in the course tilting forward and backward so forward and backward so this is nothing but pitching turning left right so left turning left turning right so this is nothing but yawing and tilting so tilting to the left sides tilting to the right or tilting to the left is called as the rolling so these are the uh, six degrees of freedom in nautical terminologies as far as your aircraft is concerned yes yard plane axis and control surfaces so before um, getting into the airplanes axis airplane stability and the control surfaces it is mandatory to understand the importance of stability and control so like why uh, why these is playing a uh, dominant role in the design of the aircraft so i like to narrate a historic uh, event in this regard uh, in 1908 so like in 1903 the Wright brothers uh, uh, like they 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 just uh, conducted a successful uh, flight and they were declared as a uh, father of uh, aircraft so like uh, in 1908 uh, uh, in uh, in france 
Mr. Uh, Henry Farman. Uh, he just uh, planned to uh, have a, a maximum endurance. So uh, now uh, uh, the aircraft is uh, ready and uh, uh, Henry Farman is uh, uh, taking the aircraft and uh, the aircraft is against the Persian wind. So the headwind is uh, coming. Uh, Farman managed to take off and uh, the, the it means just it ripples the fabric uh, uh, in the vertical tail. But uh, so the headwind is heavy, but uh, still uh, Farman managed to uh, to land the aircraft uh, at the uh, takeoff point itself. Uh, he just uh, manipulated his uh, aircraft to 1000 meter uh, uh, from the takeoff point. And uh, the endurance was uh, uh, 1 minute and 28 seconds. And that was the longest flight uh, to that date. And uh, the next one uh, in the same year, um, Wright brothers, they plan to experiment that uh, in order to get the maximum um, uh, endurance. And uh, 1903, they were declared and uh, many people uh, had the curiosity to uh, to check whether uh, uh, whether their success was true or not so there was so much crowd uh, the entire uh, ground is crowded to witness their flight and wilbur uh, he just uh, uh, take off the aircraft and he made two graceful turns uh, and uh, like without without any effort effortlessly he just uh, dropped the aircraft at the takeoff point itself so everyone witnessed that and the european aviators uh, uh, they accepted that they were uh, they were really uh, uh, really deserving of that name and uh, they they just uh, fabricated 104 aircrafts in the same year in france right brothers they did it so like uh, the Wright brothers, they patented their wing twisting at the tip. So wing warping is their uh, biggest advantage uh, for these successful turns and the stability in the control. So comparatively, so whereas uh, uh, the farm and flight, it had only vertical tail. There is no any other control surfaces. They can just uh, turn the direction. Whereas as far as uh, the uh, right previous flight is concerned, he can uh, both uh, turn and roll uh, because of that uh, using that uh, wing warping. So like stability and control, that is the reason why stability and control was uh, declared as the dominant um, uh, in uh, design. And uh, another in interesting thing is uh, one of the persons uh, witnessed uh, Henry Farman's flight is uh, Vaughn Carmen. So we have studied uh, so much about one common, right? He's an aerodynamic genius. But uh, 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 till that date, uh, the, he, the, he, he does not have any interest in aerodynamics or any physics. Like uh, so being inspired by the flight of uh, Henry Farman because uh, he, he just managed to land the flight against the Persian wind and that is the first time everyone is witnessing that. So like, uh, so he was one among the uh, spectaculars, uh, spectators and um, uh, and uh, uh like uh he, he that uh, that moment turned out uh, him to be a leading aerodynamic genius so van Kamen uh, profile uh, uh, van Kamen's, um, uh, uh, like uh, his contribution towards aerodynamics was uh, unimaginable like uh, you cannot imagine that he's uh, he's an aerodynamic genius so yes, yes. So like, so from this uh, history, we just come to know that uh, the importance of the aircraft is stability and control. So now uh, in the modern aircraft, uh, uh, there are three control surfaces uh, uh, and they are uh, uh, aileron, elevator and the rudder. So the aileron is uh, located in the wing. So uh, left aileron and the right aileron, the aileron which is located in the left wing is called as the left aileron and the aileron which is located in the right wing is called as the right aileron. 
so both the ailerons will uh, will deflect in the opposite direction if the left aileron moves up the right aileron will move down so that is how uh, it is designed and uh, uh, there is some uh, important aspect behind uh, such a uh, design of the ailerons uh, elevator the elevator is uh, located in the horizontal stabilizer uh whereas uh, in in case of uh, the elevator uh, both the elevators will uh, move down or it will uh, deflect up uh so both will have the same direction of action and in some cases uh, the entire stabilizer will uh, will deflect and uh, those are called as the flying tails and as far as the rudder is concerned the rudder is located in the vertical uh, stabilizer yes all these control surfaces are linked to the uh, parts with the help of the hinges so the, definitely by the deflection of these control surfaces there will be a moment generated uh, about the hinge so yes and uh, uh, aileron uh, uh, it, it provides the roll to the crafts the rolling is happening because of the aileron deflection pitching by the elevator deflection and yaw by the rudder deflection and uh, rolling will happen about the longitudinal axis uh, look at my arm uh, let the uh, thumb and the little finger be the wings and uh, let my arm be the first fuselage and the rolling so this is what is rolling now it is uh, right rolling since the right wing goes down when the right wing goes down you call that as right roll and when the left wing goes down you call that as left roll so like rolling is uh, happening about the longitudinal axis so about this axis it is rolling and uh, pitching so about this axis it is pitching about this axis so uh, the pitching is about the lateral axis and yawing so imagine a line uh, here an axis here so the yawing will uh, will happen about the vertical axis so understood just uh, just uh, these are all just the imaginations uh, uh, how uh, how these uh, rotations are happening about that axis just imagine yes and uh, so this table uh, um, narrates the components of the forces and the moments uh, uh, report to the axis system so three three dimensional space so uh, three axes of course x y and z and the forces are fx fy and fz with respect to that uh, axis uh, x y z respectively similarly the moment l m and n so uh, uh, l is the rolling moment the rolling moment is about the x axis and m is the pitching moment the pitching moment is about the lateral axis x indicates the uh, longitudinal axis y the lateral axis and z the vertical axis and uh, the l is the rolling moment about the longitudinal axis m pitching moment about the uh, lateral axis and n the yawing moment about the uh, is that axis vertical axis and similarly u v and w are the linear velocities along x y z uh, axis respectively and similarly pi theta and psi are the angular moment and uh, p q r are the angular velocity ix iy and iz are the inertia uh, along the like uh, with respect to x y and z axis respectively yes so the next one is like uh, what we know is for any 6 uh, uh, degrees of freedom uh, for any object in a rigid object in uh, three dimensional space system it will have 6 uh, degrees of freedom three translation motion and three rotational motion so at equilibrium Uh, the summation of forces along the direction is equal to zero, and the moment in that uh, direction is equal to zero. We know that. So now we are just equating that to zero at the equilibrium condition. So now look at this figure. So x, y, and z axis. So f x is the force along x direction. F y is the force along y direction. F z is the force along uh, z direction. So the summation of force along x direction is equal to zero. So at equilibrium condition. it is equal to zero similarly fx fy and fz in the same term the rolling moment pitching moment and the yawing moment summation of these moments are equal to zero so summation of the pitching moment is equal to zero summation of the rolling moment is equal to zero and summation of the yawing moment is equal to
to zero. So this is equal to zero and equilibrium condition. Just don't forget it. Yes. So uh, like I previously stated, the aileron, uh, if the left aileron moves down, then the right one moves up. Uh, whereas in case of elevator, uh, both uh, will move in the deflect in the same direction. So now you just imagine like when, uh, when an aileron is deflected in the downward direction, what is happening to the air molecules beneath that aileron? It is getting compressed. So thereby there is an increase in the pressure. So that pressure will just move the lift the uh, aileron up. So there will be more lift uh, when the when the control surface is reflected downwards. When a control surface is deflected up, the air molecules have sufficient space to get expanded. So the pressure force will get uh, uh, reduced and thereby reducing the lift. So you see like uh, when the say look at this figure. So in this figure, the left aileron is reflected in the uh, upward direction and the right aileron is reflected in the uh, downward direction. So since uh, the left aileron is reflected in the upward direction, uh, the, the pressure produced is less uh, and hence the less left. And uh, since it is uh, since the right aileron is reflected downward direction, uh, it compresses and thereby increasing the pressure and thereby increasing the lift that is more lift. So when this when there is more lift, then the right wing moves up and the left wing goes down. So that is the reason why the aircraft is rolling towards the left. And when you look at the second one, uh, elevator. So when the elevator is deflected in the upward direction, what happens to the air molecules beneath that? There will be more space for the air to get expanded. So thereby the decreasing in the lift. So when the decrease in the lift means, then obviously you see, uh, in the tail, the, the, there will be less lift, so the, the tail goes down and uh, uh, the wing, the nose goes up. So that is the reason why there is the pitch in the upward direction. Look at this arrow, the aircraft is, the nose up tendency is going to happen now because of the uh, deflection of the elevator in the upward direction. And you see, so like uh, uh, the deflection of the rudder, so say for example, if the rudder is deflected towards the uh, right, uh, that will be the compensated force, the side force towards the left. So that's the reason why. So this, the force in the left uh, will tend to oh, turn the aircraft towards the right direction. And uh, you see, uh, the left and the right are with respect to the pilot. It is not with respect to the control surfaces or the uh, instruments. It is with respect to the pilot. So imagine you as a pilot. So your right side is the right side of the pilot and the left side is the left side of the pilot. So that is how you, uh, you term the deflection of the uh, control surfaces also. When it is moving to the right, then, uh, then you say that the control surface is deflected to the, towards the right. When it is moving towards the left, your left, then you say that the control surface is deflected towards the left. So that direction is with respect to the pilot, cause in turn with respect to the, respect to you. Okay, so just uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, yes, now uh, uh, stability. Uh, you just uh, classify uh, stability into two categories. One is uh, static stability and the other one is uh, the dynamic stability. Yes. So we know that static is at rest and the dynamic is in motion. So like uh, the static stability of the aircraft, it describes the tendency of the aircraft to retain its original position when the aircraft is subjected to an unbalanced force of the moment acting on the aircraft. So that is nothing but the static stability. So when the dynamic stability is concerned, it, it deals with the time history of the aircraft. So the dynamic stability describes the form of the motion of an aircraft in static stability that undergoes, static stability undergoes when it tries to retain its original position. You see, like, uh, yeah, maybe from this you'll get a better clarity. Now look into the static stability. So the first figure, uh, the aircraft, this, uh, sorry, this ball, no, red color ball. So that is the equilibrium position. Uh, so uh, the ball is 
placed in the equilibrium position and the ball is being disturbed so it is moving to another location and finally it will come back to its original position so that is called as the static stability and in neutrally stable so when you are disturbing something disturbing the ball uh, the ball tend to move in the direction of the disturbance so that is called as the neutrally stable you see when you are when the ball is being disturbed uh, along this arrow mark so it will move along this arrow when uh, when the ball is uh, uh, disturbed uh, in some other direction then the ball will move in that direction so in case of neutral um, stability so it will move in the direction of the disturbance so that is what is neutral stability and the statically unstable condition means so when when you disturb that uh, ball it will not come back to its original position it will go somewhere else other than the original position so that is nothing but this that unstable condition so when it is statically stable condition you can also term that as positive static stability when it is neutrally stable then it is neutral static stability when it is statically unstable it is negative static stability so whenever when you are hearing the term called as negative static stability then it is understood that uh, it is unstable got it so if it is statically stable then it is positive static stability when it is statically unstable then it is negative static stability yes so now uh, look at this aircraft uh, so this uh, white color arrow mark that indicates the flight path direction initially the flight was in that direction so because of this disturbance that blue line no because of this disturbance because of the uh, upward gust or the wind there is some change in the direction of the flight so this green line so even after the disturbance when uh, when the aircraft managed to return back to its original position so look at the direction of the green line and the white line both are parallel to each other so which means that both are in the same direction so after any disturbance if the aircraft managed to come back to its original position then it is positive stability and uh, big, uh, look at this yellow line so the uh, the plane is being disturbed and the airplane tend to move in the direction of the disturbance so this yellow line indicates that the airplane is moving in this yellow line along this yellow line so the airplane continues in the disturbed position then it is neutral stability so uh, like uh, this red line is like uh, it is something else other than the, uh, the original position or the disturbed position so if the aircraft moves farther away from the disturbed position then it is neutrally uh, like uh, yeah, then it is uh, unstable position or negative stability condition so so i think uh, you guys understood just i just uh, repeat it once so this uh, white line indicates the initial uh, flight path direction of the aircraft so because of some gust uh, because of this uh, blue color indicates the uh, some disturbance because of this disturbance the aircraft tend to change the direction of the path if the aircraft managed to come back to its original position then it is positive uh, stability if the aircraft continues to move in the disturbed position then it is a neutral stability if the aircraft moves farther away from the disturbed position then it is negative stability yes so now okay so in case of static stability condition uh, fine the aircraft will come back to its original position but uh, do we know uh, when it will come back to its position or how it will come back to its position do we know that those things from the static stability conditions it just define that it will come back to its original position it will retain regain its position so only that we know from the static conditions static stability condition but we don't know about when it will come back to its position or how it will come back to its position so when you say when then ultimately the time history comes into the picture so when the time history come to uh, come into that picture then you term that as dynamic stability now can you uh, can you relate that with this definition the dynamic stability describes the form of the motion of the air. craft in static stability undergoes so static stability is like uh, we don't know when it will come back or how it will come back so that is what it actually means so you know 
So from this uh, disturbed position is this yellow line. It will come back to a green color line. But when it will come back to its green color line or how it will come back to its green color line. So we don't know that. So that will be described in the dynamic stability. You see later this is solid line this indicates the flight path direction so now the aircraft is disturbed uh, right from the right direction the aircraft is moving okay so this is the first position and it is it is oscillating about the reference axis and finally it is coming back to the steady flight condition whereas uh, uh, in the second uh, figure it is just oscillating up and down the amplitude is same uh, you can see this amplitude now. So the amplitude is uh, uniform throughout the uh, oscillation. So you call that as neutral dynamic stability. And uh, the third figure, uh, the disturbance amplitude is very less. The amplitude is keeping on increasing. Uh, so this is called as the dynamic instability. So similar to the static stability condition, if it is positive dynamic stability, then it is uh, dynamically stable condition the neutral st uh, dynamic stability is uh, is okay and uh, when it is when you call that as dynamic instability then it actually means negative dynamic stability condition so negative means unstable condition positive means stable condition this is in in the name in nomenclature not as far as any of your equations are concerned this is like when you when you call that as a negative dynamic stability, then it is dynamically unstable condition. So that is what plainly. Yes. So now see, so how it is coming back to its original position and this uh, x axis is the uh, initial flight path condition. So this coordinate 0, 0, no, both the x and y axis uh, intercept on each other. So this intersecting point is the initial point. So uh, it is the aircraft is displaced to some distance. And in the first figure, uh, it, is, uh, it is oscillating. But uh, look at the amplitude. The amplitude is keep on decreasing. So like uh, for sure, it will come back to its original position. So the, it is describing about the time. So after uh, uh, five seconds or 10 seconds, it is coming back to the original position. So that is why time history deals uh, uh, with the uh, dynamic stability. And now look at the uh, figure, which is uh, just below that. So that those two figures represent the positive dynamic condition or dynamic stability condition. So here, so first one is oscillation mode. It is oscillating. Whereas the second one is not oscillating. It is an aperiodic condition. So suddenly, so after the disturbance, it managed to come back to the original position without any oscillation at all. So this is the aperiodic condition. When you see the second figure, neutral dynamic stability, uh, look at the amplitude. The amplitude remains constant, right? So this is neutral, uh, neutral dynamic stability condition. And when you see the third case, uh, like uh, look at this figure, the, the amplitude is keep on increasing. So it will never come back to the position. So like in all these three, uh, like it is tending to come back. So this movement is from this disturbance, from this initial displacement, it is moving uh, towards the x-axis. But unfortunately, uh, the oscillation is not decaying and whereas further it is keep on increasing. So it is uh, the aircraft intention is to come back to the original. But due to some external parameter or something, it cannot, uh, the oscillation is not decaying. So which means that there is uh, static stability in the aircraft, but it is dynamically unstable. Uh, look into this neutral dynamic stable condition. This oscillation along this reference axis is because the aircraft is tending to come to the uh, x-axis. But still, it, is, it cannot manage to stay there. So it keep on. So there is uh, uh, static stability. But it is dynamically neutral. So in these figures, we just uh, uh, come to a conclusion like both the static stability condition is possible. Uh, static stability condition is possible even though yeah, the aircraft is dynamically unstable. Positive static is there. Still the neutral dynamic uh, stability is possible. So this is what we are trying to say out of this figures. I hope you guys understand this.
yeah so so this is this is what about the like the fundamentals of the aircraft as stability and control like you need to know the degrees of freedom uh, of course about the um, uh, control surfaces uh, about uh, uh, the static uh, stability and the dynamic stability uh, the the forecoming is uh, units of the uh, stability and control uh, are the longitudinal st static stability lateral static stability directional static stability uh lateral dire uh, direction like dynamic stability uh, longitudinal dynamic stability and directional dynamic stability so it is just classified into static stability and the dynamic stability so before getting into those things those concepts uh, it is mandatory for you guys to know the basic uh, uh, difference between the static stability and the dynamic stability yes so so right guys so thank you uh we'll see uh in the next session thank you